Okay, so what does all this tell us about our visual perception? Well, it tells us, first of all, that we really don't see as much as we think we do. Okay. And every time that there's some interruption to viewing, like a flicker, a change in camera angle, or in fact, a blink of the eyes or an eye movement, because if you remember, we said that the, every time the eyes make these little jerks, we're effectively blind. So that's another interruption. Every time one of those happens, we seem to be losing the information about what we have seen, so we only ever have access to what we're currently looking at. And what this means is that if we really want to understand what people see, we need to understand where they look. So perhaps the first thing that a magician could use for misdirection is to simply get people to look in the wrong place. Is this what's happening? Well, to ask, answer this question, what we can do is get people to wear eye trackers, that's what these are. So these are pieces of equipment that allow us to monitor where someone is looking when they're doing a variety of tasks. This is one that's built by... Um, Mike Landers in the audience, who will also be giving a lecture about the eyes and eye movements tomorrow evening. This is one that I use in my lab. But they both work on the same principle of allowing us to see where someone else is looking. We then put this on people as they watch my colleague Gustav Kuhn uh, perform a disappearance. So in this performance, you're going to see Gustav make a cigarette and a lighter disappear. But you're going to see it from the point of view of someone watching him perform. And they were seated just the other side of the table watching him do this performance. And the little black dot that you see indicates where their window of clear vision is, where they're looking. Now you may all, in this setting, quite easily detect how this uh, disappearance is made to happen. But in a close setting, this works very well. For those of you who didn't see what was done, it's kind of simple. All he does is drop what's in his hands. Okay, so this time, don't watch the black dot but watch what's happening with the cigarette. Here we go. It's, just a drop. it's an amazingly simple and effective piece of misdirection. Okay? So we were interested, and you might have noticed in that video, that the person was looking in the wrong place as the cigarette dropped, and we were interested to see whether that is what matters. So we did this with a whole group of people, and then looked at where they were looking as the cigarette was being dropped. And what we found was, pretty much what we expected, and that is that at the time that the cigarette is being dropped, everyone is looking at this empty hand or at the magician's face. Each of these little circles and crosses indicates where someone was looking. Okay, so this looks good. But then we got Gustav to perform the disappearance a second time, exactly the same as he did the first time. And this time, everyone, without fail, detected what was going on. Everyone saw the cigarette drop. So we were now expecting that everyone would be looking down here, at the right place. When we looked at where they were looking, however, this wasn't the case. What we found instead was that, apart from one person who was looking at the cigarette, everyone else was still looking over here, where they had been looking on the first trial. So clearly, this shows us that looking in the wrong place isn't the full answer. It seems to be important, but there must be something else as well. And what is that something else? Well, that something else is what we're paying attention to. So what can happen is that if we're paying attention to the wrong things in the world around us, again, we can miss very obvious things that are going on. So here's a, a lovely example from a group in the States. And what you see here, you may well have seen this, it's been on TV a few times now. Um, what you see here is an experimenter here who went out onto his university campus and just approached random members of the public, which is his one. He asked them for directions. Now, halfway through the conversation that you're about to see, two people carrying a door are going to walk between these two, and this experimenter will swap with one of the people carrying the door. <laughs> <laughs> when that happens, I want you to watch the reaction of this random member of the public. So you can see they're engaged in one-to-one -one interaction here. This is, this is a real conversation. Here comes the door, here comes the switch, now watch his reaction. <laughs> no reaction at all. And when they asked him afterwards, he had no idea that he had the second half of the conversation with a different person. <laughs> um, I find this both amazing and slightly scary. <laughs> we kind of hope that, and we assume that if we're halfway through a conversation with someone, then they turn into someone else, we might notice. <laughs> One of the key points to the success of this, of this experiment 
is the fact that this person is being asked directions. Mm -hmm. So they're paying attention to this map and to the giving of the directions rather than the person they're engaged with. So if you can engage someone's attention with something in the world, you can get away with a lot else that's going on at the same time. So how does the magician do this? How does he attract our attention to the places that he wants us to attend to? So to answer this question, we developed a second version of the same disappearance. Except here, there's no cigarette. This is after the smoking ban. <laughs> um, now there's just the lighter. And I'm going to show the video again, although you know what's going to happen. At the... Is it going to start? Yes, here we go. Excellent. Um, he's simply going to drop the lighter. It's kind of dark on the screen. Let's see if I take the lights out a bit. That helps. Okay. At the moment that he's dropping the lighter, he brings his other hand up here, he waves it around, and he looks at that other hand. So we've got two things that could be important there. We've got the waving, the movement of the hand, and we've got the fact that he's looking there. And we were interested in which of those really matters. So to answer that question, we recorded two different versions of the same um, disappearance, in which everything was the same. This was very hard to do. Everything was the same, apart from where the magician is looking. So on the left here, you're going to see repeated what you've just seen. On the right here, you see a second version in which the magician doesn't look at the hand that he's waving that's empty, but he stays looking at the hand that drops the lighter. Okay, I'll play them side by side just so that you can see how similar they are in every other way. Right. Okay. What does this do to the effectiveness of the trick and how people watch it? So now we can see the same videos, but this time, overlaid on top of them, we have these orange and pink spots. Each of these spots indicates where someone, one individual, was looking as they watched these. Now I'm going to play this through twice, because it's hard to watch two things at the same time. What I want you to notice is that at the time of the drop, what happens to people's, where people are looking in this version, the normal performance of the magic, versus this version where he stays looking at the hand. Okay, so we'll play it twice. Maybe watch this one first, and then the other one. So you see on this side, they all looked over to his empty hand as he was waving it. Now to show you again, you may have been able to watch both at once, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't do that. Here, on this side, they're going to stay mainly. Some people get dragged over here, but a lot of people stay there. And in general, what we found was that people spend a lot more time looking at this hand in this condition and this hand in the other. What does it do to our perception of the performance? Well, it changes it dramatically. In this case, very few people detect how this uh, lighter was made to disappear. In this case, more than half of our participants work it out. So clearly it's changing both the way that we look and the way that we experience this illusion. So what can we say from this direction? Well, we can learn from what we've studied in our approach to understanding this direction that there are at least two principles that might be useful to a magician. Firstly, we can get people to look in the wrong place. But more importantly, we can get people to pay attention to the wrong things. But also, we can see that this gives us a lot of insights into the way that attention and awareness work in general. It really does underline that even in a close one-to-one -one interaction with an individual, an awful lot can go on that we don't see. Okay? And it's not like we think it is. We've also seen that where we're looking and where we're paying attention to aren't always the same place. And finally, and I think this is a very important point for this misdirection, we can see that where we look and where we pay attention to is heavily influenced by where someone else is looking. Okay. So that's what I would say about misdirection.